In addition to plant life and buildings, it takes a wide variety of physical materials to create a land. The hardscapes, walkways, lampposts, backgrounds, railings, light fixtures, doors, the list goes on and on. And they all have to be made out of something. And that something must be durable, lasting for decades. Disney lands and attractions need to look as great on day 10,000 as they do on day one. But the materials must also meet the creative requirements of the artists and designers. As we're about to hear, Imagineers spend a lot of time choosing and manipulating materials. A tremendous amount of thinking goes into the choice of materials, building materials, flooring materials, drapery materials, everything that constitutes the physical presentation of a ride, show, attraction, land. We use a lot of concrete, plaster, we use a lot of plastics, and we use these not necessarily because we love these materials, but because they're super, super durable and we have a high level of control over them. If you think about guest flow in our Disney parks and about how many guests step through the Emporium on Main Street, for example, tens of thousands of people in a short amount of time. And so if you think about the flooring surfaces in that, in that shop, we, we can't put in any materials that aren't going to last with all of that foot traffic going through. So in fact, it's a fairly limited range of materials that we can use to build the places that we build. So a lot of attention has to go into the texture of the material, the temperature that that material might acquire in, in broad daylight, and then, the, oddly enough, the sound reflectivity of the material. So I could make an, a, an environment that's beautiful to look at, but when you put 185 people inside this environment, they can barely talk to each other because it's all hard surfaces and the sound is bouncing back at them. So durability and practicality are clearly big issues when selecting materials. But the materials must also reflect the theme and story. Here are some examples. We've done a lot of graphics for Tomorrowland, and in an environment like that, you would have maybe a lot of stainless steel, kind of shiny metal textures. But in something like Critter Country or Fantasyland, it would be much more in the fairy tale kind of environment. So you'd see a lot more wood or maybe kind of a hand carved texture. In a land that is inspired by the Caribbean, when you go there, you see such glorious color, beautiful tile work, you know, really cool details of weathered wood with the knots coming out of it. Treasure Cove at one point was just crawling with artists painting and sculpting concrete and plaster and wood to simulate and look just like the photos we took in the Caribbean. So Pandora, for example, texturally, everything has texture on it. The rocks are crusted with moss, the trees are knobby and spiky, whether they're real or not. Um, we're trying to create a fantastically rich textural environment and you touch a lot of this environment uh, so that you feel that it is real. Sometimes the material used is what you would expect. For example, a door that looks like it's made out of metal probably is made out of metal. But sometimes the material used isn't what you would expect. One example is the Finding Nemo submarine voyage at Disneyland, where the underwater coral reefs are actually covered with tiny little pellets of colored glass. That glass doesn't fade, keeping those reefs looking bright and vibrant, even under very harsh conditions. And this isn't the only example. Sometimes if we're making signs that are designed to look like wood, we work with people who are really skilled at sculpting pieces of material, maybe a, a fiberglass or carvable epoxy, to actually give it a wood grain texture. But when you actually see it in the park, it's not real wood. It may look like it and it may almost feel like it when you touch it, but it's not the real thing. I'm still learning about materials all the time. I think as technology advances, we're going to see new materials with every project that we're on. Uh, but I would definitely say working on the Pandora project, we were looking at materials that had more of an organic kind of feel. So we have to create a artificial plant material that is durable enough that it doesn't need to be maintained for decades. No such thing existed. That required uh, manipulating a variety of materials, window, screen, mesh, stainless steel mesh, uh, automotive paints, very, very, very high test uh, plastics um, to create something that was, in fact, it's full of steel. 
right? The window mesh is steel. It's not going to go anywhere, but the automotive paints give it this beautiful, transparent, uh, plant-like quality when we're done, and you'd never know. You can't tell that this stuff isn't real. There were some things that we saw in the Caribbean that we took, you know, close-up shots of that we we were in love with and thought were really important. And if we could recreate that for a guest, that might just be the thing that takes it over the edge. And one of those things was this glorious blue brick, roads that were made out of blue brick. And we really, really wanted to at least do that in an area in the plaza in front of our restaurant. And so Catherine Jean, who is our creative director, uh, went on a wide search in China to look for a pottery maker or a brick maker who could recreate that for us. And uh, found this lovely woman who did custom tile, who made this blue brick for us. And um, everybody who walks by the land, it catches their eye. It turned out to be a really important um, element. Now it's your turn. Use the next exercise to select the materials that you'll need to build your land.